Don't you just wish your new puppy came with an owner's manual? The manual would spell out how your puppy works and what to do to troubleshoot any problems you might be experiencing, like biting, potty accidents in the house, chewing, pulling on the leash. I bet you can name a few more. Some troubles you may be experiencing stem from a inconsistent schedule or a lack of exercise and expectations that are a little too high for a young puppy. In this video, I'm going to share with you tips for creating a consistent schedule and what happens when you don't follow the schedule. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit that thumbs up or that like button to let me know you're watching. Now, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you get notified when next week's video goes live. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Don't forget to check out my other social networks after this video. You can grab the link to those in the description below. Now, since we start training pretty much from the minute we pick our puppies up, it's important to establish good routines. This means we typically start with a potty and a crate training schedule. The general rule of thumb is your puppy can hold their bladder for one to two hours per month of age, and only if you're using a crate. I'll talk about that more in just a moment. We do cap this at about eight hours when your puppy is about seven to eight months old as we don't want to force them to hold their bladder longer as this leads to bladder infections. Now, if you work and you'll be gone for more than eight hours, hiring a dog walker to help let your pup out for a midday potty break or a play session and to stretch their legs would be ideal. If you don't use a crate when you potty train, this means your pup will have more room to roam around. More space means puppy system will be constantly processing and won't get a chance to slow down long enough to help strengthen those bladder muscles. And then help your puppy learn to recognize when their brain sends the signals to the bladder that it's time to head outside. Often new puppy owners get really frustrated with all the accidents their puppy has and they don't realize that it can take several months to potty train a puppy. This is because the puppy needs to grow and develop a little bit more before they can hold their bladder longer as well as recognize those signals internally, and then signal to you when they need to go out. Now, inside the free new puppy starter kit, I do have a couple of potty training lessons you will find very useful. The link for this resource is in the description below this video. I also have a potty chart to help keep track of what happens and when. This helps you start to notice a pattern to your puppy's bathroom habits. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that using a crate can really help you speed up the potty training process. I do know that several places around the globe do not use this method for training, but instead think it's maybe just an American thing. Now, I always compare crates to cribs for babies. We don't set our baby on the floor to sleep. We put them in a safe place so that they can rest peacefully. Crates provide a safe place to keep your curious puppy safe when you can't supervise them. Now, I do talk more about crate training in my crate training videos here on my channel. Currently, I have six crate training videos and you can access the playlist here. <laughs> now, remember at the beginning when I said some of your unwanted puppy behaviors stem from a lack of a consistent schedule? Well, that's because part of the consistent schedule includes nap time for puppies. You see, several unwanted puppy behaviors stem from overstimulation. Puppies need maybe about one to two hour naps several times throughout the day. Your puppy's schedule should consist of getting up in the morning and heading out for a potty break, then coming back inside for maybe a 15 to 20 minute play session or a training session followed by you guessed it, another potty break. Then I use mealtime as a perfect time to train since you can use their kibble as reinforcement. Maybe about 10 to 15 minutes after your puppy has eaten, I take them back outside or you should take your puppy back outside for another potty break. We only hang out there for about 10 minutes at a time. If pup doesn't go, we come back inside, uh, but they do not get to run around off leash. As a matter of fact, I will actually put them in their crate for five to 10 minutes and then take them back out again and try again. I do this to avoid the opportunity for an accident. You can also tether your puppy to you using a leash. The goal is to keep your puppy near you to avoid an accident and to watch for any signals your puppy may give off to indicate that they have to go outside. Now, after they've gone out, 
You can bring them back in and either put them in their puppy pen if you have some household chores to do, or maybe they will be tired and ready for a nap. I think the big takeaway throughout this whole day is to create structure and don't allow free, just a free for all. After the morning nap, it will be time for a potty break and then another play session and a training session, and of course, lunchtime. Puppies up to about six months should eat about three meals per day. And after six months, we tend to transition to two meals a day. Now, we feed three meals a day because puppies can't handle long durations between meals. Otherwise, they get an upset stomach and then they spit up that yellow bile. Now, after lunch, we typically follow the same schedule as we did for the morning block. We add another nap session in during the late afternoon, followed by another potty break and a play session. I want you to break your pup's day down into blocks of time. The early morning block, the late morning block, the midday block, the late day block, and the after dinner block. So for eight to 10 week old puppies, there should be about two to four potty trips per block of time, at least one to two hours of napping per block of time, and maybe a 20 to 45 minute play session per block of time. And last but not least, a five to 10 minute training session per block of time. This means putting your puppy's leash on and working through any one of the games inside our online puppy course, 30 Days to Puppy Perfection. Now, I want you to plan your day based on your own schedule, so what I'm about to say may not be right for you, but it should at least give you an idea of where to start. Maybe your day starts at 6 a.m., so the early morning block would be from 6 to 9 a.m. The late morning block would be from 9 to 12 p.m. The midday block, 12 to 3 p.m. And then the late day block is from 3 to 6 p.m. The after dinner block is from 6 p.m. all the way to bedtime. So for 12 to 16 week old puppies, there should be about two to three potty trips per block of time, at least a half hour of napping per block of time, and a 30 to 60 minute play session per block of time. At last, but not least, <laughs> again, a five to 10 minute training session per block of time. This means putting your pup on a leash and working through any one of those games inside the course that we talked about. Now, usually by 16 weeks of age, you've developed a pretty good pattern of potty, play, training, and nap time. Remember, naps happen in the crate with the door closed and the cover on, not the puppy pen. The puppy pen is for playtime only. Be sure to watch this video here, all about how to stop a puppy from crying in the crate if you happen to be experiencing that issue. And when in doubt, evaluate your puppy's energy level. If they have a ton of pent up energy because you recently woke, up, woke them up from a nap or they woke up from a nap, they're going to need exercise to drain out that energy. When they've been out of the crate for a while, they're going to need a nap. Otherwise, they are going to get overtired, cranky, bitey, barky, and jumpy. Now, I often get asked about the evening routine and what time to put a puppy to bed or what happens when the puppy wakes up in the middle of the night. Before I share my tips, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I don't want you to miss next week's lesson. All right, usually after dinner between six and 8 p.m., your puppy will have a sudden burst of energy. They will race around frantically, crashing into things and look pretty silly as they expel some energy. We call these the zoomies. This is a sudden burst of puppy energy. We do not correct our puppy when this happens, but instead allow them a safe place to run around and release that pent up energy. I also make sure my dog gets an exercise session about an hour before bed with at least a 20 minute cool down period, followed up by a potty trip outside and then it's bedtime. We wanna exercise our dogs a little before bedtime so they don't wake up in the middle of the night ready to play. Now I do put my pups to bed around 11 p.m. and expect that I will likely have to get them out one to two times in the middle of the night, especially if this is a puppy under 12 weeks of age. When you take your pup out in the middle of the night, it really should be if you hear them start to stir. Typically, it's not encouraged to wake a sleeping puppy. You also don't wanna open the crate door when they're barking or crying, as this will reinforce the barking behavior. Instead, wait for them to be calm, even for just a moment. Quietly take them outside and then quietly return them back to their crate to sleep again. 
We don't want to rile them up too much during the middle of the night potty trips. Otherwise, they will have a really tough time going back to sleep. Now, our puppies around eight to 10 weeks will likely sleep two to three hours at a time. And puppies 10 to 16 weeks might start to sleep for four to six hours at a time. Remember, your puppy's metabolism does slow down at night, so they may not need to go potty as frequently. This isn't an exact set of standards to follow, as all puppies are different. Environments are different, and people's training habits are different, and their routines are all different. All these things can change the outcome of your puppy's training progress and the schedule. I want you to make sure you start to establish some sort of schedule as soon as possible as this really does help your puppy's progress. Inconsistencies will lead to a confused puppy and this leads to a frustrated owner as well. When you follow the course outline we've laid out in 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, you will start to see what and when you should be training, which skills uh, to work on and in what order you should be working on them. Now, all too often we see brand new puppy owners working on skills such as the party tricks like handshake or roll over well before their puppy really understands what sit down, stay, or even come really mean. Your puppy is most impressionable the younger they are. This means we wanna teach them manners and impulse control as soon as possible. Teaching a really young puppy shake or high five means you'll likely get a puppy that paws and begs for attention early on as this behavior gets your attention. Likely, they will try it in all sorts of other situations when it's not really needed. And if you're unsure of what your puppy schedule should look like, don't forget to grab that sample schedule inside the new puppy starter kit. In the comments below, tell me, how old is your puppy? And have you started working on establishing a good puppy schedule yet?